Hello World Friday is Jane's videos and today I will be doing an unboxing and review of the Spirit Halloween 2022 Straw Man Animatronic. Um, I don't believe I've mentioned this yet, maybe I have, but Straw Man is my favorite Spirit Halloween animatronic of the 2022 season. Now I'm not entirely sure if he's my favorite animatronic of the Halloween season, um, the 2022 Halloween season as a whole, because I have yet to see some of the ones that I really like from Party City in person, and that would really determine that. But he's my favorite spirit one for sure. If you know me, I'm really into scarecrows and stuff, and this guy is a scarecrow that honestly looks really cool, but also he's got the Grim um, Servo. Uh, and Grim was my favorite animatronic of last year. So it's only fitting that a scarecrow version of Grim is something that I would really, really like. Not only that, but he's an awesome looking scarecrow too. Here you have his box. It's pretty, um, it, I, I wouldn't say it's small, but it's not huge. Um, like Grimm's was pretty big, but his is not huge. None of the boxes are really that huge this year other than like possessed pumpkin and stuff. There you have the, a look at the side there. In the back, of course, he's $2.99.99, of course. You should probably be using a coupon or something to get this guy, as with all of the spirit animatronics. And then you got that side view there. Alrighty. I'm really excited to see like the head on this guy and everything, because that's one of my favorite props about this animatronic, because he's got he's got such a great head sculpt. And I thought that that was what this was right away, but it's not. These are the clothes right here. We have some foam, which I would assume would be for the legs. That would only make logical sense, wouldn't it? Um, look at that. That tape just came off so easily. This is the head. I'm going to save this for last, so I'm not going to look at that yet. We have instructions. We've got... Okay, so this is all one piece. His hands and his arms are pre-attached. There you have his cool hands. And then, like I said, his arms are already attached, so that just makes the setup even easier. You have his shoes, which are actually a pretty good um, quality. They're not like the cheap plastic that SVI sometimes uses. They're actually pretty good. And then you have his other shoe, of course. Right here. Here's his module, or I should just say his whole upper torso with the mechanism and everything. We have that there. There's the module. Uh, he's got a cool body swing animation, which you can see connects right down there. So interested to see that in person in all of its glory. Now what fell looks like the shoulder frame. That's what that is. Does he not have a hip hoop? Okay, so I, I just want to put it in, just in case you don't notice it like I didn't. The hip hoop is not a pre-separate uh, thing, it's actually attached. Which I was nervous for a second because I thought it was missing a part, but it's pre-attached, so that's good. Um, adapter, of course. And finally, let's see if I can just slide these zip ties off. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut that, but we have to pull, whoa, this is not finally. I completely forgot the best part, which is the head. This is not finally at all. We have leg pulls, and I don't know what these are. What would these be? Well, these are probably more leg pulls. I don't know. I'm, I'm out of it today. I don't know why, but these are obviously just going to be more leg pulls, which for some reason I was like, what are these pulls going to be? They're just more leg pulls. So, you got those. He's also pretty tall from what I know. He's about 6.6 .6 feet tall with the hat, so he's pretty big. You got the base. And I saved the best part for last, which we're going to get to now. I didn't even need scissors for any of this. There's the head. Oh, that looks awesome. This is one of my favorite parts about this animatronic. I think it's one of the creepiest looking scarecrow heads possibly ever on an animatronic. Look at that. There's one very important piece I forgot here because they kind of just throw it along. They throw it in with his head. This is to keep his head in. Since the serve, since the servo is going to make his head move around so much, you got to have this um, to keep it in. And one thing that's interesting, Grim required screws to hold his head on. They actually have like a nut and bolt here so that 
that kind of just works. You just screw it in. This is just a PSA that Dunkin' Donuts has released their fall menu. So this is a pumpkin spice latte. It's officially the Halloween season, basically, was what I'm trying to say. He is massive, holy cow. I didn't even take a second and stop and look at how big he is. <sighs> He's close to seven feet tall for sure. With, with this hat, if you pointed it straight up, he'd be over seven feet, guarantee it. Here is the straw man, fully set up in all of his glory, and honestly, I think this is a fantastic animatronic. Now, I love Grimm from last year. He was my favorite of last year, so it's only fitting that a scarecrow version, as I do like scarecrows as one of my favorite Halloween things ever, a scarecrow version of Grimm would be my favorite of this year. I think I actually might like this guy more than Grimm, and um... That's crazy, because I loved Grimm. Um, this guy is just incredible. Like, I, I'm gonna get a little bit closer to him in a minute, but I just wanna mention, first and foremost, how gigantic this animatronic is. Yes, he's wide because his arms go out, but really what I'm talking about is how tall he is. He's way taller than I expected. Now, he's advertised as being six and a half feet tall, but I don't think that's including his hat because he looks about six and a half at the top of his head. The hat is almost touching my ceiling, so I would say the hat's probably about seven feet tall when fully standing, and mine's not even at the full point. Mine has a little, I added a little curvature there, because it is posable, which is a plus to that, of course, because you can get it looking however you want it to look, which is great. I'm gonna get closer and show you the amazing detail on this guy, because it just looks so great. I think his face is one of the best parts about him. I love how it looks. I love that creepy scarecrow look. I think he's one of the creepiest scarecrows we've seen. He's got that classic scarecrow look, which I love, but it just looks so disturbing. Something about it, something about how it looks. I think it's really the mouth and how wrinkled it looks. He's a very creepy looking scarecrow overall. He's got some great detailing too. It is a latex face, which I know people have issues with latex. Personally, I've always liked latex. I just think it looks better and everything. Um, I know dry rotting, but personally I like it. His hands look pretty cool. I love how he has the straw coming out of his hands. I love how he's not just straw. Um, like how most scarecrows, instead of hands, they just have straw. I like how he has hands and straw that wraps around his hands. Again, that straw is comes out very easily. It, when I was setting him up, I actually yanked out a bit of it on accident, so definitely be careful with that. But he does have plenty that you can't even really tell. One thing that I think is really cool about him is how he has that little patch of straw in the middle of his uh, chest to make it look like it's protruding from his, uh, from his clothes. I think they could have taken that a step further and put it in more spots because it's not too noticeable unless you really look at it. I mean, you can tell it's there, but it's not super, super noticeable. I think they could have taken it farther, made some coming out of his arms, maybe one out of his legs, to really make him look like an old, worn-down scarecrow where the straw is just falling apart on him. I think that would have looked cool. When I tell you this guy's detailed, I mean it. The pants 
So they are just plain blue. They do have blood spots on them, which is great. It's not just the stupid dirt spots that so many props have that I never understand why they have them because I don't know what they're supposed to be. It actually has some blood spots, which is cool. You've also got a little patch on his knee, which I think looks pretty awesome. And another thing I love, again, he doesn't just have straw for his feet. He has shoes and then the straw surrounds those shoes which I'm a big fan of because it just adds more character to him. I think it looks cooler than just having straw and just calling it a day. I also want to mention the fact that this guy is so thin, I think is really awesome because he's supposed to be a scarecrow. He's supposed to be made out of straw. One problem that a lot of scarecrow animatronics have is they're kind of too bulky in my opinion. Like they're not like super bulky, but they're bigger than they should be. Like their arms are bigger than they should be. Their legs are bigger than they should be. This guy's very, very thin. He's very slender and he's very tall, so he looks like a scarecrow should look. He's only filled with straw, he should be skinny, but also he should be tall because scarecrows are supposed to be giant imposing things to scare the crows away. And I feel like this guy is exactly how a scarecrow should look. They nailed it perfectly. Did you know that this land is cursed? The original farmer buried his victims in this very field. They say it helped to keep his soil nice and fertilized. Would you care to see where the remains lie? <laughs> I've been keeping these tools nice and sharp. Just in case the farmer's spirit returns this year. I think he will be very pleased with how I've been running things. And I'm sure he'll be thrilled to see you. <laughs> if you're looking for somewhere safe, you can hide in the hole I dug out back. It's six feet deep and very cozy. I'll even tuck you in with a few layers of soil on top to have a nice, long rest. Appreciate you. <laughs> you aren't afraid of little me, are you? Why I love this time of year, with the dead leaves all around us, and the darkness wraps around us like a mildewing blanket. Perhaps we could get acquainted while I sharpen my tools. <laughs> like this when the border between worlds grows thin. You never know what is lurking in the shadows or right behind you. <laughs> Stay close and keep your limbs closer. You wouldn't want to lose any. So as you can see there, he's got a fantastic animation. The servo is just incredible on him. It looks great. Now on mine, on one of the phrases, the head actually whips back and forth really fast, which I don't think they all do that, but I love that it does that. It looks great. His servo is fantastic. And one thing I love Grimm, but one thing that was my complaint with Grimm is I think they took the servo too far. Like they were trying to show it off a little too much and his head was moving in all these weird directions that wouldn't, it wouldn't be moving in as he's just talking. This guy, though he does do that to an extent, it's not as intense as Grimm where he's looking all over the place for like no reason. He looks with intention. He just surveys the room as he's talking. And also, it's a little hard to notice on mine just because its head kind of goes up a little bit when it's talking anyways. But when he laughs, he tilts his head back. So he moves with intention, which is very important if you want a prop that has this much character because the whole gimmick of these servo animatronics is to make them as lifelike as possible. If you're banking too much on the servo that you're trying to show off the technology and not really caring about how lifelike it looks, it feels robotic even if it looks cool. This guy I think does it to the perfect extent where it looks lifelike and still shows off the cool servo technology. Also his tilting from side to side is really cool too. I really like it. I think it looks great and I'm really happy that they added that. I think it's a very cool feature that Again, a lot of animatronics this year are really doing cool things. Instead of just turning side to side and talking, they're doing things that are different. And this guy is exactly that. Also, his phrases, I think, are great. 
They're pretty dark and they work pretty well for the character. So I'm going to go on to talk about his price, which is $299.99. And I've said a lot about the prices this year, how they're too high, and I think a lot of people agree with that. But in all honesty, and this may be a controversial opinion, I actually think this guy's price point is somewhat worth it. Because Grimm last year was 280 and then he was bumped up to 300 But even last year, I remember saying, and a lot of people don't agree with this, but I remember saying, I feel like Grimm was fairly priced, considering his servo, uh, his servo and all of the animation he had. I mean, his eyes moved, his head moved, his mouth moved, his waist moved, his arm moved up and down. He had so much, and the servo alone is an incredible um, mechanism that usually, on like a professional prop website, they'd be charging you hundreds and hundreds for something with a servo. So I thought he was actually priced lower than I expected. So that's so even though this guy's a little bit more than Grimm, I think it's still a fair price point for what he does because the servo is truly incredible. He's got that mouth moving too, and he sways from side to side. He's got a little bit less animation than Grimm, but he's definitely bigger than Grimm, and um, I, I'd say it's fair, to be honest. I don't really have too big of an issue with it. It's not one of the prices that I'm like, wow, that's absurd. Sure, it could have been cheaper, of course, but I wouldn't say it's horrible. I'd say it's pretty fair. In conclusion, though, I'd highly recommend this guy to anyone who loves the classic Halloween scarecrows, that type of stuff, because that, that is really why I was drawn to this guy, because not only the servo, but he's just such a great scarecrow. He's truly a creepy one, and a lot of scarecrows are kind of too goofy and stuff, that they don't really come off as creepy. But this guy is a classic scarecrow that comes off as really, really creepy, and that makes me very happy to see something like this. If I were to be honest, I think he might be the best scarecrow animatronic we've seen. And that's talking about classic scarecrow. I'm not talking things like barnyard butcher and stuff like that, because I've never considered him a scarecrow. He is a butcher. But this guy, I would say he is the best scarecrow animatronic we've seen. And that is awesome. I think if you want a scarecrow, this is the one to go for. For anyone doing anything to do with farm related stuff or anything like that, I'd say go for this guy because he's a really great one. I feel like he'll uh, capture a lot of people's attention in any display, haunt, whatever. If you got a good place to put him and you're considering getting him, I'd recommend it. And I'd recommend to not wait too long because he'll probably be a great seller just like Grimm was. The servo's fantastic and also people usually gravitate towards the more classic Halloween imagery. And so stuff like this usually sells pretty fast. So I can guarantee this guy will most likely sell pretty fast. So if you want him, get him as soon as he comes to your local Spirit Halloween or online or whatever you want to do. I recommend this guy fully. I hope you all enjoyed this review much more on the way as the Halloween season is beginning. Keep howling at the moon, my werewolves.